There has never been a better time than now to come join the Belicio Foods team. Belicio has a new contract in place with plenty of awesome perks for their employees. From increased wages, access to the free health clinic, vacation after six months, and much more, Belicio Foods is committed to putting their employees first. For more information or to apply, visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Take advantage of these great new employee benefits and join the Belicio team today. Visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers to learn more. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on Main Street TV. And um, we're here with our good friend Pete Wilson, not on the normal day, but we're super excited to have you here. Right. Uh, hump day, right? It's hump day Wednesday. And of course, the morning news update from our good friend Pete Wilson brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. And if you want uh, that local spin on real estate, uh, the true hometown people, Give Nia a call, 740-418-4135, and she'll take good care of you because she's always working. Okay. Always. So, so if this is hump day, at some point, we're going to go downhill. It's going to be a little easier. Is that how it works? Uh, um, No, because when I get to the weather forecast, it's not going to be easier at all. Okay. All right. Pete. All right. Well, into, into every life, some rain or snow must fall. Or ice. Right. Yeah, even that. It's January. Come on. It is. Right. Okay. All right. Well, we do have a, a lot of news. Um, we you know, weren't here Monday because of the big snowfall, mm -hmm. and we might have a little snowfall a little later. You know, I know you'll give us the particulars on that. Yeah. So um, because we weren't here Monday, we've got some, uh, we got some stuff we want to go over, some uh, stuff that we would have said on Monday, and some new stuff as well, and we'll look ahead at uh, what is coming up. Yes. But uh, probably at the top of the news stack, uh, outside of the snow, was a freaky fatal accident yes. that occurred out on Sour Run Road. Uh, so terrible. I only have the details of what the patrol uh, uh, put out, um, but uh, here is what we know. It occurred Monday morning, uh, after, and we're talking after midnight, about 12.45 a.m. That's when it was reported, mm -hmm. or that's when the patrol was notified. So I don't know exactly when it happened. It could have been sometime before that, but it was a single vehicle accident involving an ATV uh, particularly, if you're familiar, a 2017 model Can-Am Outlander. Now, that is a utility vehicle. And uh, this accident happened on Sour Run Road, um, and this was on the night of the snow. Yeah, there, were, uh, there was overnight. already a lot of snow on the ground, I'm guessing, and on Sour Run Road. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the utility vehicle. But a very fun thing to be out in the snow on a utility vehicle. Right. A lot of people do that. Right. This was on Sour Run Road, and this was... Uh, the, the man who was driving it was Adam W. Preston, age 35, mm -hmm. uh, had a Wellston area address, and, but I'm guessing he probably lived in that area, which mm -hmm. is Wellston Postal. Sure. Anyway, uh, his utility vehicle, remember it's dark, and there's also snow on the, str on the road, I'm presuming, uh, his um, utility vehicle struck a tree that had fallen across the roadway. It was across the roadway, so you're it's not expecting crazy. it there. Yeah. And... Um, you know, as a result of the accident, he died from his injuries. That's Corner terrible. was out there and, and everything. And uh, the road was closed for about three hours. Uh, I'm guessing that that tree had fallen just very, very recently, just mm -hmm. before the accident, because nobody was out there, you know, to clean it up. It had not been reported as right. far as I know. So that, you know, the timing just, I mean, tragic as it is, but uh, just horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but um the road was closed for about three hours, and the patrol did make this reminder, as they always do after any kind of, of crash like this. Um, they wish to remind motorists and the public to obey all traffic laws concerning ATVs. And what that means is most ATVs, maybe all ATVs, are not supposed to be on public roadways. Yeah. I, I know that a lot of times you might cross public roadways when you're you know, out in the field or whatever. Or, right. and, and some people, obviously, they can travel on roadways. They're capable of doing it. But legally, they're not supposed to be on, on public roadways. I don't think the fact it was on the roadway had anything to do with the wreck other than the fact that, that tree was across the road. Sure. So very, very tragic uh, a wreck that uh, probably was storm related as far as that tree coming down. Yep. All right. Uh, speaking of the snow, I know that's uh, what everybody was thinking of, um, you know, last week. 
uh, uh, did you see the grocery shelves at some of the big box stores? Well, <laughs> a couple, just a, even a couple of days before it occurred. I did. And I also, you know, my interviewing. Who, who's my, got all the hamburger? Well, anyway? I don't know. Where is it all at? But, um, <laughs> I, you know. I will say this. I went into Kroger that, like right before it started snowing. They were totally stocked. They well, it's because everyone anywhere. had been there the week. Yeah, <laughs> okay. The week. Well, I was there on Sunday night, and it wasn't. So you must have hit it yeah. even on Monday before yeah, I, it started. Well, what? What? Yeah, Sunday night. So I, or yeah, so I would have been like Sunday afternoon when I went, and I couldn't believe like they had meat, hamburger. I mean, everything. Sure, because everyone had already They'd been already there. Already been there. Yeah. So I was talking. I, I'm kind of like you. I mm. tend to interview people mm. whether I mean to or not, and I was talking to to. Uh, one of the staff members at one of the local grocery stores. And <clears throat> I said, "Did I bet last week wasn't fun. She said, no, it was not. <laughs> they bought everything in the store. And then the people that couldn't get anything yelled at us because we didn't have anything in the store. And I said, well, I'm sorry. It, it, I, like, I, you know, it's just don't do that. Certain certain staples. Like, seems, not OK. Certain staples seem to be, you know, in demand. You know, yes. of course, bread, milk. Hamburger. Tomato juice. Couldn't find tomato juice right. to make chili. Like, there must be some ginormous pots of chili out there still in someone's fridge. Just right. saying. And 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 people people buy as if, you know, they're going to be, uh, you know, in a bunker for months. <laughs> for months. <my, I> <laughs> You're right. But, uh, yeah. They hit no, the toilet paper pretty good, too. Yeah. They, <laughs> it's like, how many times can you go during a day? Like. <laughs> But anyway, okay. nonetheless, be kind to your local, you know, store workers and things because it's not their fault that the entire world came in and bought all the bread and milk. Like, well, we're, we're talking about, you know, how much snow. It can vary, of course, all over. Yes. But what I'm hearing the most, and I even saw one official site say six inches in Jackson. I'd say we had about six inches at our house. Right. And Vinton County, I think about the same. I asked a couple people up there and both said six I think towards the south, it could have been worse, mm -hmm. uh, maybe eight inches mm -hmm. uh, in some of the Oak Hill areas. Um, I had some pictures uh, sent to me by Daniel Parker, who uh, uh, works for the township, and also he's a Madison Jefferson yeah. firefighter. And uh, he was saying that on some of those township roads there, this would be east, of o east and north of Oak Hill, uh, there was a lot of snow and drifts that were... Uh, a foot and a half deep. There's some fun pictures. I know, for example, um, you know, Jamie and I, the, you know, you let the dog out in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like measuring her leg. Like, I'm like, okay, in relation to her legs, how? And so <laughs> she gets out. And I must have been one of the drifts because she <laughs> started in Marley's a lab. So she's really tall. And um, <laughs> it just like all of a sudden it was like, oh, there she went. <laughs> So, I mean, I think as far as the normal snowfall at our house, it was about six. But, yes, yeah, those snow drifts, well, I, thought, I thought we there, were going to lose her. I didn't notice that many around here. But that if you're looking at, uh, at, at the monitor there on the right, that is a two and a half foot yeah. snow drift on Flatwoods Road, if you know where that is. No. That is in Madison Township, okay. Little Road. There on the left, that is kind of like a snowy scene. There on Jim Lackey Road. Very That pretty. is off 35, also in Madison Township, you know, down as you heading towards Rye Grand. And then in the middle, uh, that is the picture that we picked for the front page. Mm -hmm. And that is five-year-old Henry Prophet. And you can see uh, it is night outside. And he didn't care. He was out <laughs> He's building his fun. snowman that's about as big as he is. <laughs> and he, 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 you know, he didn't think too hard on the name, but it was a good one. Frosty. I like it. You know that Frosty the Snowman is going to show up many places. I would say just so. Like, just like Santa Claus gets around <laughs> on on December on the night of December 24th. So anyway, so of cute. course, you know, we got a pretty detailed report about how the snow affected everything and, and lots of pictures, too, uh, in our Wednesday edition, which is out today. Um, as far as how uh, the impacts go, of course, uh, nobody in school yesterday it was MLK Day on Monday. Yes. And so, you know, you already had all the kids It worked out pretty out well, school. honestly. It did. Everybody back in school today, as a matter of fact, uh, there was a two-hour delay at Oak Hill, but that had absolutely nothing to do with the weather. Oh. They had parent-teacher conferences scheduled anyway, and so they were going to be, the students were going to be coming in later oh. because of parent-teacher Again, worked out well. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, what we have now, 
There is no levels in Jackson County right now. You know, you have the snow advisory emergencies that the sheriffs declare. Uh, Jackson County got up to level two, mm -hmm. went back down to level one, mm -hmm. and it went off yesterday afternoon. That's Jackson mm -hmm. County Sheriff Ted Frazier making that uh, making that uh, uh, determination. Now, even though there's no level, that doesn't mean that there still isn't treacherous, hazardous well, places on the back roads. And that's I'm the sure problem. I'm sure there are. And um, let's just talk for a minute about parking lots, sidewalks, things like that. Because what happened yesterday was we got some melting um, with the warmer temperatures and the sunshine. And then, of course, things refroze overnight. So there is a lot of black ice out there. And I don't even mean where you're driving. I mean where you're walking. Right. So please be very careful. You, you really do. Because you, like yesterday... Uh, it got just a little bit above freezing, and then the sun was out too, yes. so you had a lot of melting. Well, you know, all that water is not going to dry up. Just goes like to a sheet of ice. That's what happens in the evening. So you really do have to be careful whether you're driving, Please walking, or whatever. be careful. On surfaces where, you know, yeah. that, that water still is, yep. and it was uh, a lot of places. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Vinton County, I just got off the line with the sheriff's office to confirm this. They went up to a level three for a short time okay. during that overnight period. Uh, they are now, they went back down to level two, and this morning they are at level one. Okay. And, of course, what those levels means, uh, level one, level two, level three. Level three, which is the highest, of course, non-emergency traffic is not supposed to be out at all. Right. You could be arrested. It always causes a stir when they do a level three because of employment situations. Yeah, do I go like to that. work? Do I not go to work? Right, like, right. And you know, when you're not supposed to be out, <clears throat> but you check with your employer, there's a kind of a mixed message there a little bit. There is. But, so but most, check employers, with your employer. most employers would probably not expect you to be there unless you have the type of job where you're doing a service that's important in a time like that's that. That's right. The level threes are ma mainly so, and they will ticket you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know people that have gotten tickets. Well, you know, if, um, you're, if they don't think that you're out for a legitimate reason. Correct. Uh, you know, if you're just out having fun, you're, you're probably going to get a ticket, but basically they're just begging you to stay off the road so they can get them clean. That's right. what the whole thing is. Move your cars off the streets, stay off the road so that the trucks can get through. Right. And, and, and level one means that there's hazardous uh, driving out there. Uh, don't go out unless you have to. Level two is a heightened Kind of in between. Right, yeah. right. It is. You you can be out, but you really should not be at all unless, mm -hmm. you know, it's food, medicine, you know, gas. Correct. <laughs> Something that you have to have then, you know, or work, I suppose, would fall into that. But uh, we can talk about the next snowstorm here when we get to the weather. Yep. But we're going to go to COVID now. What do you think? Oh, we I have, can't wait. We've not received the updated numbers, but I can tell you that anecdotally, uh, I've talked to people who had different situations uh, where they needed hospital care or they've gone uh, to the emergency e room. Yeah, and it is—it's uh, a nightmare. It, it that that is not uh, that is not uh, probably an exaggeration. It's a nightmare. Using that word because there's so much demand on the hospitals yep. right now in the emergency rooms. Long wait, even though when you go to the emergency room, you think, "Oh my gosh, you know, I'm really sick." Yeah, you know, it could be really, really serious. Well, there's lots of people there, and the census of hospitals are up mainly because of COVID anyway. And this and is don't winter have anywhere and the to... flu season and so forth, too. Correct. And, and and so here's the problem, too. The bigger hospitals are full mm -hmm. with people with COVID and other illnesses. So our smaller hospitals that would typically transport people out for, you know, bigger illnesses or whatever, they still have those folks. There. They can't get, I don't want to say get rid of anyone. That's not, but they're not moving anyone out. So... Mm -hmm. They're just stuck. Right. And then, and you know, you get to where, where you need to be hospitalization or maybe you have had a surgery scheduled or, or some uh, procedure. It's important, but it's not life-threatening. It's likely that you may get put off on yep. that if you're trying to schedule it or even if that's you're true. scheduled to do it. I mean, that's a generic statement that probably applies almost everywhere. Now, I did see this. I don't know whether it's changed. And this is, this is, this is kind of like a small thing, but at least it's, it's, it's good. Both Jackson County and Vinton County in level of positivity. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, the uh, percentage of people that are contracting COVID-19 based on population. Jackson and Vinton County are both, uh, I think Jackson County was 59th and Vinton County was somewhere in the 70th in the 88 counties. Hey, that's good So news. I guess what that's saying is as bad as it is here, and you know, we've had what, 300 cases plus the last time we heard in a week in Jackson County. 
uh, it is actually worse in a, on a per capita wow. percentage way <clears throat> in most other counties in the state of Ohio. You know, Pete, I, I will say for the first time since all of this madness started, however, what two going on three years ago, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I I have never s- talked to so many people that are sick right now that have COVID. Like, it, I mean, it, it's like everybody has it. Right. And, you know, they're, they're basically what they're basically telling you is <clears> if you're <throat> sick, because, you know, sometimes there's problems getting testing. We'll talk about that in a minute. You know, they just basically tell you to quarantine at home. Oh, you know, so here's the thing, too. If they if, if you're sick, please stay home, you know. Putting a mask on and going to one of the grocery stores or, you know, the pharmacy or whatever, like, that's not okay. You need to stay at home. And that's me preaching, but it's the truth. Well, and it, Because it's it's happening where people are like, oh, well, I'm not well, listening. I'm just, don't be selfish. No, you, 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 you go out and spread it. And then, you know, in, in the smaller units, a family unit, maybe a, some athletic team or group or whatever, or classroom, yeah. it can really rage through there. Sure. Because this uh, strain, the Omicron... We, which we suppose most of the cases are extremely, extremely contagious. It seems to defy vaccines even yep. to a degree. Yep. So once again, I don't want to try to sell you. Uh, I don't want you to infer not to get the vaccine. That is still the best thing that you can do to protect yourself. But obviously it doesn't make you bulletproof. Well, either. let's just say the statistics are that the huge percentage of folks that are hospitalized are not vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So take that for whatever you take that for. Right. Well, the last thing we heard was... Like up into the 80s percents. Exactly. The last thing we heard on testing, because everybody wants the tests because they want to, they want to know that they're sick or they're not sick because, you know, if they got a cold or whatever and they can carry on their lives and not worry about infecting someone else, you know, you, you want to do that. And there's just Ohio weather. Like, am I just feeling Ohio weather right now? Mm -hmm. Like my nose, my throat's scratchy and my nose is drippy, but that's probably just Ohio winter. Right. Well, or is it? I don't know. Well, you don't know. You you don't know. (laughs) It's like, I don't know. <laughs> well, so that's you, why the tests are important. Right. The tests are important. And sometimes they're hard to get. We understand that the Jackson County Health Department, I've learned, uh, is out of tests again. They they're in and out, it seems like, because they go through them pretty quickly because of the demand. Vinton County reported at the end of last week that they were also out. Uh, now, of course, they have uh, that drive through site at Adena Regional Medical Center. Now we receive news from the governor late yesterday that there's going to be one of those, uh, the National Guard is going to be helping at Holzer, at Holzer Health System here in Jackson. No way. Just like the National, awesome. just like the National Guard was at Adena, you know, doing the drive-through testing. That's great. Right. The, the latest thing we have, uh, make sure I, I'm looking at this only for the second time, but last night, Governor DeWine said the Ohio National Guard support will continue to shift to address increasing needs in Southern Ohio in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Decreasing demand at some of the first Guard-supported COVID-19 testing locations in Northeast Ohio, where the National Guard already was, will allow the Guard to surge into other areas of the state, including Central and Southern Ohio, that are seeing increased need. Changes in Guard deployment, including new support for testing locations uh, in several Southeastern Ohio communities, including Athens, Pomeroy, and Jackson, and that Jackson location is... Holzer Medical Center Jackson, what we call the hospital, okay. at 500 Burlington Road. Now, what it doesn't say that I've seen is whether this is going on now or it's tomorrow or it's today, but they are announcing that it is going to happen if it um, hasn't already happened. James, if you check Holzer's um, social media, I do believe that they made a post about that, and I didn't read the whole thing, so I apologize about that. Um, yeah, Holzer announced, this is what I saw yesterday, they may have updated it. They say, Holzer would like to officially welcome and announce the arrival of the Ohio National Guard. Sounds like they might be there. Uh, In the weeks, oh, I'm sorry, in the weeks to come, (laughs) now what's the weeks to come? Patients may notice Ohio National Guard members assisting and providing relief to some Holzer staff positions. We appreciate and welcome them to the Holzer team and hope that our patients will do the same. So, um, not totally sure whether the National Guard is there now or not, and the testing is going on at a drive-through site, you know, like is going on 
at Adina already. That's right. And uh, yeah, the that's way. the picture that they posted um, online yesterday. Right. So and you that's know, you, very if, exciting. If you don't know anything about it and you're just going out the holes or maybe for something routine and you see the National Guard, you're thinking, <laughs> oh, what, no. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. You know, you know um, are, there, are the Russians doing something? You know, what's, <laughs> right. what's, what's going on here at our health facility? But that's what it is. They will be helping, uh, you know, uh, giving the personnel support. And I do understand that Holzer, our own hospital here, is heavily taxed now with the demand yes, from everything. It, it is. Um, they are very, very busy out there. So, All right. And you can maybe take the ball on, on, uh, from me on this. And that is about, uh, of course, on the testing, the new Get Free at Home COVID-19 yes. test. You have already tested it out. But basically, did. Jennifer, uh, the way I understand it, uh, anyone can go online and order four tests. Is that correct? Correct. Now they don't, you know, they don't come immediately, but you can no. get, you can get them to come on the way. Tell us how that works. Sure. So, um, the government has, is understanding that people are having a hard time getting tests. So they came up with a way that they're going to send every household. So residential property, uh, for COVID tests, if you request them. So what you do is you go to COVID tests with plural, dot gov, covidtests.gov. And basically all you do is you put your name, your email address, and your physical address, and you hit go, purchase, I think. And it says, you're good. Um, uh, we will send you the four tests. They will start to be sent out uh, more toward the end of January. So uh, probably within a week or so, and they will send four tests to every American household. Um, I did try it to see if I could sneak it through just to, for fun. I uh, put the restaurant address in there, and it knew that it was a – it said, no, this is a business address. Okay. So don't try that because it's not going to work. Right. Big, but um, Big Daddy knows who you are. Yes, they do. It's kind of <laughs> scary. But no, and it's a, just a good way. You get four free tests for your household. Um, everybody go on, request it. It took me, I don't know, 15 seconds to just to type in my name, my email, and um, just physical address, hit go. And, it, and then you get um, a notification from the United States Postal Service, okay. where they say that they've received the order. Right. And the sheet I have here, Jennifer, says orders will ship in 7 to 12 days. Okay. So uh, this isn't something where, you know, you can get online and, you know, that you're going to have that test in your hand the same day. No. So if there's a way that you can do a test sooner than that, by all means, do it. This is but just to have it around your household in case th of. This is a good, it, it's like having a, a, a bottle of cold medicine on the shelf. You don't know when you're going to get a cold, but then, then you do, it's there. That's absolutely so, correct. And you're, and you're good to go. Right. So this is something that you should do now, not when you feel symptoms or whatever. Correct. The way I read it. And, you know, the two big things are only four at a time. And, you know, there's households with more than four, let's face it. Yep. And, but, but they are free. They are, but you're only get that address is only getting four. I'm just telling you because they are way smarter than we are. COVIDtest.gov yes. is where you go through that. And our own Jennifer has done it <laughs> successfully. Woo -woo. Did you do it, James? No. Not yet. Not yet. No, I was just, Jamie and I were talking about that last night and, you know, the up, uptick still. And I said, you know, I th there's this government site. And I said, I don't know whether we can get on it yet or not. And so I tried it. And uh, yes, it worked. It was very, very smooth. Right. And the tests are rapid antigen at home tests, not the PCR where there's a little bit of a delay. Yeah, it's in like the, the 15 results. minute test. Right. And they, they can be taken anywhere. Uh, they give you results within 30 minutes. There's no drop off at a lab or any professional yep. person in a white coat to have to tell you about it. It will work whether or not you have COVID-19 symptoms or not, which means, you know, you, you wonder if you're asymptomatic. I mean, you're not going to take a test every day if you're asymptomatic, but if you have a test and you've been around people, that would be certainly a, yes. a reason to take it. It will work whether or not you are up to date on your COVID-19 vaccines. And uh, it also uh, you it also are referred to self tests or over the counter OTC tests. So um, anyway, Uncle Sam is trying to help out. They are, and it's at COVIDtest.gov. .gov. You can 
gov, you can get four at home tests mm-hmm. sent to you seven to 12 days, depending on how, easy. how the Pony Express moves. That's right. And unlike most, I'm just going to say it, government sites, this one's super easy. Okay. All right. Because a lot of times they run you around in circles and stuff. Okay. All right. It's proven by Jennifer that you can do it. If I can do it, y'all can do it. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, and you're not a dumb blonde. You're a smart blonde. God bless your heart, Pete. I'll I, I know that from just talking to you as much I'll as I I'll buy you an Archie burger later. Okay, okay. Oh, I love those. <laughs> I love those. I was there last night, and the uh, the uh, deep-fried pork was great. Good. Yeah, I asked exactly what it was because I hadn't had it, and they said, well, it's a big pork chop. It was a big pork chop, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> good. All right, it really was. Thank you. Okay. All right, as far as the vaccines, tomorrow we want to remind you for the third time that the Jackson County Health Department will have extended hours for a vaccine clinic, a walk-in vaccine clinic, uh, Thursday, January 20, uh, 7 a.m. to 12. That's So that's earlier than they would be open. And that's walk-in. Well, let me let me see Or here. is that appointment? It says uh, no one will be turned away due to lack of insurance. Uh, doesn't say anything about calling. And it's 1, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Here's what I will tell you, because I had the idea that it was an appointment thing. It's just extended hours. So I think that's what it is. So call the health department okay. and, and, and set that up. It's 286-5094. Yes. Uh, if you don't get a live person, leave a message. They will get back to you. They want to get as many people out to this vaccine clinic as possible. And uh, I'll try to find that out again and we'll maybe report again tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I'll, get, sure. I'll give you guys the news. But, yeah. it, but it doesn't say, the information they put out doesn't say walk-in, but it says nothing about appointment either. But all the other clinics that they have, regular hours, are on an appointment basis because it's a small place, limited staff. If they're not set up at someplace like a school or the Nazarene Church, yeah, uh, where there's more room, they can't. They just can't have, spots. you know, scads of people walk yeah. in like, you know, like it's free tacos. <laughs> All right. The Vinton County <gasps> Health Department. They should give free tacos <laughs> with the vaccine. Okay. That might entice okay. people. All right. Well, the Vinton County Health Department has two COVID-19 vaccination clinics set through January and February. Uh, they are set for Thursday, January 27th. That would be a week from tomorrow. And then again, a Saturday clinic to be convenient on Saturday, February 5th. They have the J and J or the J and J, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines to both children and adults offered at this time. You do have to make an appointment. Uh, call 740-596-5233. Once again, 740-596-5233 to make an appointment for uh, the clinics there in Vinton County. Okay. All right, and we'll try to you know look up those numbers for you and maybe pass them along, Jennifer, so you, maybe you can give them. Uh, because remember, uh, the experts are saying, and they don't say the same thing. That's the confounding thing. Mm-hmm. But I have seen multiple news stories where the Surgeon General and others think that the worst of it will actually be later this month and into February. Yeah. That can vary different places. You know, maybe we'll be through the worst of it here. Maybe the worst of us will, for us will be even later than what, than, than, than what it is through the average of the rest of the country. Well, I think you do, you know, I think that it is a fact that, you know, they, I, they believe this thing kind of originated in South Africa and South Africa is reporting that it's really slowing down. So we have to assume that, <clears throat> We'll face the same thing, we hope. The story I read said that I believe 36 of the 50 states have had increased cases while others are either declining or stabilizing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the number of cases per week in a given or, or in a given period is really an indicator of what the trends are. Mm-hmm. So we will see. But we know it is bad right now, just ripping through it households, uh you know, groups. very contagious. Right. Just remember, it's very contagious. It, it certainly is. All right. Uh, elsewhere, off the COVID track, off the snow track, uh, last week, the Jackson uh, Board of Education made a very important hire. They hired oh. a district treasurer. Oh, remember, good. we told okay. you they were down to two people. Yes. Uh, they have hired a young man who is the current treasurer. Uh, the, he's the treasurer chief financial officer for the Trimble Local School District. That is in Athens County. 
and he is said to be extremely competent. They were uh, very high on their uh, the quality of their applicants. Great. Uh, when it came down to the final two, I understand that the administration and all five board members thought that this man, Jared Bunting, was the number one choice. And so they are very they are very happy with him. He will start. Great. I understand February the first. Wow! Okay. And he will take That's the quick. place that was vacated by the resignation of Rachel Strausser uh, last year. Mm -hmm. And in the interim, because this went on for uh, most of 2021, Brenda Hill stepped into the breach there and served as interim treasurer. And I know that the hierarchy of the Jackson City Schools are so thankful for her mm -hmm. because Brenda Hill had been for many years between the Wellston City School District and the Jackson City School District of uh, the, dist the district treasurer for both. She had retired and probably thought she could relax. But <laughs> they called her, Surprise! can you help us out till we get someone? <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it took a while. Yeah, and thank you. She did that because it was the right thing to do. Right. So, so uh Kudos to Brenda Hill, kind of like a hero behind the scenes for the Jackson City School District. That's right. Because you're talking about, I'm guessing that you're talking about uh, at the Jackson City School, since it's the biggest school district in the state, mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's the biggest budget of any entity in Jackson County. I would That's my guess. I'd say there's now, a, we've got yeah. a couple big plants, but you know, you're talking about, a lot of, talking about a lot of employees and a lot of money to support mm -hmm. the schools as well. And it's public stuff. So very, very... Uh, very technical, very exacting there. Right. All right. Uh, there was kind of like a good news story out of the last meeting of the Oak Hill Union Local Board of Education. Okay. Now, we remember if we uh, go back to the December meeting, uh, there were some parents from Hope Haven. But they were from Oak Hill, but they were parents who had students at Hope Haven School here in Jackson. Uh, you know, developmentally disabled students, mm -hmm. special education sure. who were in Hope Haven because there wasn't really a place for them in Oak Hill, plus Hope Haven is specialized. Well, a couple of years ago, the Oak Hill uh, Union Local Board of Education, uh, with a different superintendent, launched uh, a project to build a new building next to Oak Hill Elementary that would uh, serve a couple of purposes, but one of them was to house some of the special education students so they wouldn't have to go up to Hope Haven, up the road to Jackson. Okay. Well, uh, this was about this facility was about ready to be put into use, and some of these parents who came to the December meeting of the uh, Board of Education either felt like they weren't properly informed that their child that their children may be transferred back down to Oak Hill, or they did not want their children transferred to Oak Hill. Nothing against Oak Hill because it's home, but. Their children were used to Hope Haven well, and felt that, we don't like to move schools. No kid likes to move schools. Right. So, you know, <laughs> it, it got to be a situation. Uh, hey, we didn't have enough information. We didn't know. And I won't say that that is true, but that was what some of the parents thought to a degree. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was, hey, we like Hope Haven. And, you know, that's the most important thing. We don't care that it's up the road 13 miles or whatever. So, uh, the, you know, that was a... A thorny issue for the board at this last meeting last week at the Oak Hill Union Local Board of Education, uh, Dr. Marcy Shepard, who is the superintendent, and the board addressed some of the parents who returned to this meeting, and they said they are going to reconsider what they are going to do. Okay. And in the short term, at least, if a parent does not want their child immediately transferred from Hope Haven to the Oak Hill schools, they don't have to do it. Okay. Now, Oak Hill schools have to work out some kind of uh, contractual agreement with Hope Haven on uh, how this is going to work because these students live in the Oak Hill school district. So, you know, they have a connection that way, whether they're in the Oak Hill schools or not. Uh, and of course, there is state money that follows these students. Right. So that, it, I think, has to be a side issue as well. Well, it has to be addressed, you right. know, one way or the and, other. And so it, it, it's, it's not <clears throat> solved, but... Because of the listening that the Oak Hill Board of Education did, uh, along with the administration, they are going to come up with a, they're going to revise their plan, and they're not going to, at least in the short term, force any change if you don't want to change. Okay. But I'm sure that the Oak Hill District will be working. Not only will they have a new facility, but I'm sure that they will be set up to be able to serve these special education students. Good. And Hope Haven, though, has so many students... Uh, Jennifer, 
that I know that there are special education units at a couple of our elementary schools here in the Jackson City School District. Uh, more students than in the past percentage-wise are, you know, they're not, they're not mainstreamed, as they say, into the schools because of their special needs. And so there is a great demand for special education services okay. beyond maybe what there was once in the past. Sure. All right. VC Board of Education. Let's talk about them and let's talk about Jeff Thacker. Jeff Thacker is kind of a friend of ours yes. because he's broadcast the Vinton County uh, football and basketball games for a long time. Well, he received a great honor from the Ohio School Boards Association Southeast District. Uh, Paul Mock, who is the representative, there he is on the left. If you're looking at the picture, that is Jeff Thacker on the right. Jeff ended his school board service at the end of last December, uh, at least his school board service with the Benton County Local Board of Education, and he served 30 years. Wow. Okay, now you and I can guess, me because I'm a newsman and you because you're a woman about town, <laughs> you know that it's not all... All, all a bed of roses when you're a school board member. You don't do it for the money. You're dealing, uh, you're in a position of great authority between the superintendent and the public, and it's the public that comes to you if you have a concern, a beef, a complaint, whatever. Right. And Jeff did this job for 30 years, many years as the president. And so he received recognition at that last Vinton County Local Board of Education. Jackson Jason Radabaugh, who was a board member, was also recognized because he served 10 plus years. So it was a tenure thing as well as a service thing. Nice. He was he was he was honored as well. And so was Tom McManus, last year's board president, who did not run for re-election as Jeff Thacker did in 16 years of service for Tom McManus. But Jeff Thacker, I saw this too, and maybe we'll report this uh, the next uh, time I'm here for the news. Even though Jeff retired as the uh, wanted to retire and did retire as the president and as a member of the Vinton County Local Board of Education. He remains a member of the Gallia Jackson Vinton Joint Vocational Board of Education and he was even installed as the president nice. at a meeting earlier this year. That's a big deal. So, so Jeff very still very willing uh, to serve. All right they made a very important hire uh, at the last Oak Hill Board of Education meeting. You know there was a special education uh, deal but also they hired a new football coach oh, at the last meeting. exciting. Remember, Paul Carver resigned shortly after the end of the last football season. And um, they are very pleased, the Oak Hill uh, leadership, with the uh, hiring of Chad Vanderhoof. Now, that is a new name and a new face for the Oak Hill area. Uh, he did not coach last year. There is Chad. There, there is. is his face, by the way. You'll get to see it a lot more, especially down mm -hmm. in the Oak Hill area. Uh, he's already at work. Uh, taking care of the of the football program. It is not something that you just start doing in August these days. Uh, no, it's There's year round. There's a lot of training, sure. a lot of training, a lot of weightlifting in the off season, and then a lot of things in the summer, practice and pre-practice, I guess we'll call it. But, uh, you know, it's it's not just a fall thing. But anyway, Mr. Vanderhoof has a um, career, had a career in the military. Uh, he's actually a disabled veteran. Uh, while he was in the military, he coached military football teams. Really? Right. And then That's after so cool. he got out of the military, he has coached at some local high schools, most recently in Wolf County, Kentucky, which isn't real close to here, but it was kind of a beginning or rebuilding program. And so it was very challenging. And uh, Oak Hill liked what they saw character wise in Mr. Vanderhoof and his background, all of these he did and that he was willing to take a small program and work almost from scratch, make it much better. He did that for two years. Last year, my understanding is he wasn't uh, coaching football, but he wants to coach again. And they had 19 applicants, I think, and Whoa. they picked him. So wow. I'd say that he has the credentials. <laughs> so Chad Vanderhoof, welcome to Oak Hill, Ohio, the Oak Hill School District, and to the football program, which is important to lots of folks. It is, definitely. All right, we'll get to politics now, now a little bit, and also government. Okay, sometimes it goes together, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, the Jackson County Republican Central Committee had a meeting last Thursday to pick a new third ward councilman for the city of Jackson and also to address vacancies on the Wellston City Council. Mm -hmm. uh, meetings that were to have been held earlier in the month were postponed because of the numbers of people who could get there. And, you know, there may have been some illness related things. It, it was just a big whammy of not right, going right. to happen. And there's not that many people that are actually vote on these appointments. And, you know, so you had to have a certain number yeah. there. 
So they end up having that meeting last Thursday. And in the city of Jackson, uh, the new third ward councilman is Herman Crabtree Jr., maybe <gasps> better known as H.D. Crabtree. No, I think he's better known as Mr. Amanda Okay. Crabtree. All right. Well, he is. <laughs> he used to be the wife of a man, or the husband of Amanda Crabtree. Now he has the identity. <laughs> now he has the identity of being a public servant because very he, good. He was chosen by the Jackson City Caucus to be the new third ward councilman. He will serve the two year term that was vacated by Debbie Biggs on her sure. resignation. She was actually elected to a new term uh, in the November general election, but she has moved from the city, and you have to live in the city. So they had to That's pick right. somebody new. Uh, Mr. Crabtree has never been involved in government or politics before, uh, as far as I know. Uh, never been certainly elected to any public position, but he sought this, and he ac actually got the appointment over another over another familiar face, Dan Call. Dan Call had been the, a city councilman. He was defeated in this last election because seven people were running through three at-large yeah, spots. Yeah, it was quite and, a race. And the caucus ended up picking H.D. Crabtree. Okay. Uh, as the uh, Herman Crabtree Jr., H.D. Crabtree, as the new councilman. Mr. Amanda. And he will likely be sworn into office at the next Jackson Council meeting on Monday night. And that will give yeah. Jackson City Council a full complement of councilmen again. All right. In the city of Wellston, an appointment was made as well for the fourth ward council position. And that would be... Um, Lindley Carey. Now, Lindley, we don't have a picture of her because Lindley was not at the meeting, but she was the only one seeking that post. And the Wellston City Caucus, of course, picked her unanimously okay. as there was uh, no other candidate. And Lindley had actually done it, uh, this slot, through the end of the year, uh, replacing Anthony Brenner, who resigned to become the Wellston City Service Director. Right. And nobody else was seeking it. Lindley was willing to continue to do it, so she was appointed. The other position in Wellston that is vacant probably will not be vacant for very long. It is the second ward council spot. Mm -hmm. Madison Vance was appointed to, to serve the unex to serve the unexpired term that was a uh, vacancy that was created by the resignation of Wayne Cosper, a second ward councilman in Wellston. The situation and circumstances were a little different, though. Mr. Cosper not only resigned as councilman, but he also withdrew as a candidate. That made it a little bit different than the Anthony Brenner, Lindley Carey situation because Mr. Brenner did not resign mm -hmm. as a candidate. He uh, had his name on the ballot, but he had no intention of serving and indicated he didn't. That made it a party appointment. Because uh, Mr. Cosper turned in a resignation as a candidate as well or withdrew as a candidate, it becomes a Wellston City Council appointment rather than a... Really? Right. And I don't think that was known until they kind of researched it. Interesting. Again, we've had all these crazy <laughs> election things happen in our county recently. But but Madison Vance would like to be the second ward councilwoman. Okay. She'd like to continue. Nobody else is seeking the position that I know of, but it has to be a council okay. uh, selection. Council will meet tomorrow night, so they may be able to take care of that. And I would expect Madison Vance to be appointed by Wellston City Council to fill the unexpired term that uh, where nobody ran, basically. Mm -hmm. Wayne Cosper, I thought his name was on the ballot. They say it wasn't. I thought I saw it when I reviewed election. But regardless, he's not uh, taking the position. Okay. And he didn't intend to run for the position either. So Madison Vance, I'm sure, will become the seventh councilman uh, when council convenes tomorrow night. There you and go. Angela Spangler on the first ward and Teresa Pond Lamaster at large, those will be two new faces that will be on Wellston City Council when they meet for the first time. Uh, through 2022 uh, tomorrow night. They were have to met earlier, but COVID reared its ugly head and they canceled that meeting. All right. Uh, on the county side, um, well, no, let's go back to politics. Did you know that last Saturday there was a United States Senate candidate in Jackson? I county? did know that because I talked to our good friend, Lisa Parker, and she was telling me about All it. All right. Well, Lisa has a whole lot to do with that. Now, Tim Ryan was coming anyway, but Lisa made the arrangements yep. for uh, him to make a stop here in Jackson on his listening tour. And I will say this, he went many places, and there is Tim speaking in, in the uh, basement of the La Rosa's Pizzeria, where they have a, a banquet <coughs> slash meeting room. Mm -hmm. And uh, he spoke uh, for about 20 minutes. He took some questions. But that same day, he had been in Ironton, Galpolis. Jackson from Jackson, he went to MacArthur and then to Logan and then on to Columbus. Wow! So he took a took a run through uh, southeastern Ohio there, 
And uh, I was there to hear his message. And uh, it, it wasn't overly partisan. You know, a lot of times, you know, you get the choir there. You know, they want you, want, mm-hmm. you, want to hear some, you know, some rhetoric, some good partisan rhetoric. He didn't address Republicans. He didn't uh, attack Donald Trump. Uh, he didn't uh, uh, make himself, uh, he didn't say anything about his Democratic challengers in the primary at all. What he said was, he is running to boost the middle class and the working class. He feels that too many jobs have gone overseas. People are making things in other countries. They're not making them as much here. Mm -hmm. And he wants to support not only unions, but the working man in general so that they have more jobs here that they used to have that Mm -hmm. are here now, manufacturing production jobs. And he wants to support this initiative, uh, whether it's infrastructure or programs that that, uh, would incentivize something like this happening. That is what he is for. He is also very, he was also very forward in his remarks about China. He considers China an enemy. He says that China is looking to have support superiority over it. They're doing things and making things on the high tech end that we don't do as much anymore. He says they're going to move ahead of us if we don't watch sure. it, if they're not already. And uh, doesn't like some of the trade policies with China either. So, I mean, very outspoken on that. Wow. Tim Ryan has been in Congress for a long time. He got elected in 2000. He is from Northeast Ohio. He was born in Niles, now lives in the Youngstown area. His district is up in that area. But he's running now for the NTAR state. He hopes to take the position held now by Republican Rob Portman, Mm -hmm. who did not run for re-election. There are several other Democratic candidates on the Republican side. We probably couldn't fit them in this room. No, there's There's, a lot. There's a bunch of them running on the Republican side. And that election, of course, will be in November. The primary will be in May when the respective parties will pick their nominee. So give Tim Ryan credit for uh, coming here. And something very illustrative, too, I think, on the political climate right now. I was sitting there, and I saw this, so I'm going to say what happened. Yeah. His political coordinator was there ahead of time, of course, and he did two smart things. Uh, He set up a couple questions that Ryan wanted to answer, and they were fair questions, Mm -hmm. all right? But he also bought pizza for everybody because he was was running late. That was the smartest thing. But the other thing he did was he actually asked one of the Democrats in the room to ask him what he thought of the COVID policy of the Biden administration. All right. Mm -hmm. That would be a loaded thing to do because things, you know, controversial, not going real well. And, you know, let's face it, whoever's in there, there's lots of COVID cases. People are going to say, why'd you do this or why didn't you do this, Mm -hmm. et cetera. I think that's fair. All right. They asked that question as he as he asked. And that's a question that I could ask, a fair question. And he was critical of the Biden administration. He wanted to go on the record as being critical of the Biden administration. He says that the Biden administration has been too vaccine and nothing else. Yep. You know, there needs to be more support for therapies. And you don't really hear a whole lot about it. Republicans kind of talk about that mm-hmm. because it's something they can counter the Biden and the Democrats on. But too much Democrats and too many messages that change. Yep. Uh, that w- I mean, and I'm only telling you this, not because that's, I'm telling you, that's what you ought to believe. This is a Democrat who wants to become the United States Senator criticizing the sitting president on at least one policy. Yeah. Right. So all this is in a front page story in our uh, Wednesday edition of the Telegram. All right. On the, um, we'll move along here. Uh, on the uh, business side, let's talk a little bit about that. Last Thursday, uh, there was a ribbon cutting at Priority Mortgage. Yeah. Priority Mortgage is Super in downtown cool. Jackson, right next to the spot on Main. Uh, it is uh, uh, oh, right across from the old uh, Total Media building. Yeah, like right where we and used Priority to And Priority Mortgage used to be out on McCarty Lane, but they have moved to this new spot downtown. And the Jackson Area Chamber of Commerce, which has become more active in recent months, had a ribbon cutting. Uh, it was not only chamber people were there, but also some local dignitaries, Jackson Mayor Randy Evans, uh, Jackson County Commissioners were there. Uh, and of course, some priority mortgage representatives were there. And we had a story in our in our uh, Wednesday paper where you can read all about priority mortgage and the mm-hmm. people that were there. And there are the ribbon cutters. Alex Shope was there, wrote a great story that you can see in our paper. And James Hamilton was there. Yay, James! Uh, and, Thank you. Uh, you can see a video mm-hmm. uh, on the. It, it's on the tell. Is it on the Main Street TV also, James? Yeah, it's on the tele. 
it's on the Telegram uh, Facebook page, and you, it's linked to the Main Street TV page as well as the Total Media All right, YouTube and, page. And as always, a very nice video. It kind of comes alive for you. Uh, yep in video style there. So, you know, you can go and take a look at that if you haven't seen it already to learn more about Priority Mortgage and see some of the folks that were actually there and what they say about it. Nice to have another wonderful business downtown. Right. And they seem to be excited to be there. And right now with the housing and real estate market the way it is, I imagine it's not too bad to be in the mortgage business. Probably not. People have that money and they seem to be willing to put it down. That's right. All right. Hey, another friend that has moved downtown is our good friend, Jason Gillum. Yeah. Pudge moved his office. Pudge moved his office. Right. <laughs> Jason was in the office commons at 135 Euron, you know, where Larry Kidd mm -hmm. has that wonderful virtual office building where a lot of people are able to uh, have a physical spot, but they get some secretarial services or sure. they can if they want. Yep. Uh, nice concept. It's worked very well. And Jason, though, decided to move downtown to uh, 228 Broadway, and that is uh, right next to, it's right it's right next to the Kelly Wiley Realty Office, just mm -hmm. down one and by the tattoo parlor well, as well, the, Area 51. What was the diner, but now the Munn's? Yeah, it's the, it, yeah, it's the diner, yeah. Munn Group, and then I believe Jason's office yeah. is there, and there's the tattoo parlor, and then Kelly Wiley yeah. right there all in a row. Uh, Jason doesn't do the tattoos, but he does insurance. I'm and guessing I'm not going to let him do it. Yeah, there, there he is. And he's a real family guy. He can sing. When now. we wanted to do a story to acknowledge his moves and because he is a good guy, great for the community and he sings, yep. uh, he wanted to have his family in the picture. And there, there's his wife, Mindy, and his son, Gibson. <laughs> if that is not a indicator or tip off about the musical side of That's that family. Right. <laughs> right. He named his son Gibson and he sings too, by the way. Uh, but anyway, there they are in front of their office at 228 Broadway. And he wanted to do two things. Not only did he want to say, hey, I'm here. He wanted to thank Larry Kidd in the office commons for what he did. He felt like that that got his business off the ground, yep. being in a nice location like that. And he could not say enough nice things about the office commons. And he steered any prospective or new business, if that fits what they need for the time being, whether they're a new business or existing business, he recommended them very, very highly. Very classy of Jason to do that. And we wish him the very best in his new location. Also, in Wilson, there is a, a business with a new location, the Retro Rocket. Oh, cool. Isn't that a cool name? It is. Right. Well, the Retro Rocket is a pulp culture store, whatever that means. Uh, but they, but they, have a, they have a lot of neat things there. I've heard a lot of nice things about it. But they have moved to a new location uh, they moved at the end of, of December. It opened actually on December 22nd. It's at 18 South Ohio Avenue. Okay. And uh, uh, the man who runs that, uh, let me get his name. It's Nick and Quincy uh, Quin uh, Kincaid, hus okay. husband and wife. And I've heard so many. I've been there one time. I've heard so many nice things about the Retro Rocket. They just It's one of those stores where you step in and say, I've never seen stuff like this before. Yeah. It's a specialty store with a, a, a lot of nice things. And they picked a nice thing to be in Wellston, the Retro. Yeah, I love that. The retro, it's very fitting. The Retro Rocket. It opened June 6, 2020, and they saw fit to move to a new, bigger, and nicer location. Good. So the best of luck to them as well. Okay, we also want to acknowledge the Jackson High School cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. They took first place at the Holiday Lights Championship, uh, which was at Worthington Kilbourne High School. And, you know, the cheerleaders, they have their games and competitions just like the teams do. You know, this is... this is Well, sure, they have to be there for the teams to <coughs> cheer, but then they also have their competitions that they have to prepare for. Right, and for. it means a whole lot to them, and obviously... At Jackson, this is a competition cheer team. It isn't necessarily all the varsity cheerleaders or JV cheerleaders. It is a group that does just the competitions, mm -hmm. but a lot of them are also on the cheerleading squads sure. themselves. But they did well enough at that competition at Worthington and Kilbourne that they qualified to go to a national competition. And there are the girls. It's Yay! a big squad. They are going to Disney World Woo! on March the 21st. And so, 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 so congratulations to them. You know, if we had a, a sports team that qualified to go to Disney World, we'd be talking about it, you know, all, all hour. That's so right. congratulations to those girls. They work very hard doing that. Uh, <clears throat> also, we want to give you another weather-related report. Uh, Rumpke uh, contacted us yesterday, and they provide 
uh, disposal services through a lot of folks sure. in Jackson and Benton County, especially in the rural areas. The weather put them behind, you know, all the snow we had on Monday. And yep. everything they do this week is going to be a day behind. Okay. So if you have Rupke on Wednesday, it's going to be on Thursday okay. and so on. And so the Friday people will be serviced on Saturday. It'll go, you know, knock back one day or a one day delay all week gotcha. long. And they will try to get everywhere they can. Uh, you know, there may be some places they can't go uh, depending on, you know, where you are in your driveway and all like that. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, they do ask that you have your that you have your trash out uh, at the right time. It will be a day late this okay. week. Fair all, enough. All right. On the basketball cancellations, uh, we've had some. There mm-hmm. is a game tonight that we're going to have on the radio. The Jackson girls basketball team, uh, who is tied for first place in the Frontier Athletic Conference, will be Way playing federal girls. hockey uh, out of Athens County non-conference. Jennifer. But every game is important because we're getting into the second half of the season, and they're That's looking right. forward to not only the conference but the tournament after the regular season. That game will be on the air tonight. I'm thinking approximately 7.15 airtime on WKOV 96.7 FM. We stream as well. So uh, you want to be able to do that. If you can't, uh, if you can't, uh, if you if you're able to get to the game, they are a delight to watch mm-hmm. the girls' team under Coach Matt Walburn. That's right. Uh, but a couple other games uh, that aren't going to happen: the Benton County High School boys basketball team were supposed to play Chillicothe yesterday. Mm-hmm. They have moved that to today. They will oh, be playing okay. today. That game will not be on the radio because it was rescheduled. We couldn't make arrangements, but. That game will take place tonight okay. as the Vikings of Coach Matt Combs, who are having another good season, will host Chillicothe, another good team. Tonight, the Vinton County girls were supposed to play Trimble at home. Mm-hmm. That would have been a titanic struggle because Trimble has a great team in Vinton County. You know how good they mm-hmm. are. That was supposed to be tonight at Vinton County, and it was going to be on the radio. They've postponed that game. It's not going to be until February the 10th now. Oh, not for a while then. So the boys will play instead of the girls, and it won't be on the radio. Also, uh, the boys' basketball games last night that involved both the boys' and girls' teams at Wellston, those games uh, were not played. They were supposed to be on the radio last night. They weren't no word on when they will be rescheduled. Okay. So now we've come around to the uh, new snow. Please tell me it isn't true. <clears throat> well, so here's the deal with the weather today, Pete. Um, so the great news is, um, as you can see, Warm temperatures during the day today, right? So yeah. about 43 degrees. So you're thinking, L- yes. At least we'll get rid of some of that Yes, stuff, we'll we? get rid of some of the snow. Um, so what's going to happen? This is last forecast that I looked at and, and studied. Um, what's going to happen? This afternoon, we are going to get some rain uh, coming down. So rain coming down, 43 degrees. Great. Let's get rid of some of the snow. Except for, as you can see, that bottom number there, Pete. It's what gonna, does that say? It's going to tumble 17 tonight yeah, overnight. It says 17. So what Ooh. does rain do when the temperature falls down, down, down? Rain turns into snow. Well, we don't have to go to Columbus for the skating rink, right? We do not. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. Um, they are calling for um, about dark tonight, anywhere between 5 to 9, not exactly sure. Um, that rain will start to turn into snow. So what's going to happen is what melted today and what falls overnight tonight is going to freeze into our friend, the ice. So, um, yeah. So, and it is going to be then continue on. Uh, so sheets of ice overnight. Then, um, as you can see tomorrow, not much help. The high only of 26 and the low around eight. And they're calling for wind chills of much lower than that. So, Depending on this one to three inches that we're supposed to get overnight, depending on when the temperature drops as far as the rain goes versus it turning into snow, that's how much snow we're going to get overnight, but it's also going to freeze overnight. So anything that melted today that's not gone is going to freeze. The snow that we get overnight is going to freeze and yeah. So okay, we well, could be in for nothing or we could be in for a giant mess in the morning. Right. So you know, here we are. You know, the, the six inches that we got, Jennifer, if you remember how it started, because we were all ready for it because we had such a, a great advanced forecast. It was we out there did. several days. Yes. 
it started out a little later than it was supposed to, it and did. it started out as rain. So we're thinking we might get oh, by with a, an inch or two, right? And yeah, then we uh -huh. still got it. Could have been a lot more it could if have the temperature been. would have dropped a little sooner. But to morning this morning on my computer, I got an alert. I don't know exactly when it went into effect, but we are indeed under a winter weather advisory. I mean, it is official. I believe that the winter weather advisory kicks in at seven p.m. That sounds as about as right. The, or as, far as far as I think the they're talking starting. about the snow. And it did say mm -hmm. possible accumulations of one to two inches. And and if you, if you go around, everybody knows that the weather is the same. It's how you interpret it, how That's you correct. guess it's going to be. That's why you wonder, like, the, what, how they, they're different on the COVID. Why do you have all these interpretations? That's what it is. It's an interpretation of what... Well, everybody sees. And th this is the thing with the weather, too. Don't get frustrated with us sitting in this particular space because, as you said, you know, say Jackson got six inches of snow the other day, South Oak Hill, eight inches of snow. So, and I don't know what it is with these storms that we've had, but they all are running south. So we are right, like literally the highest county that's supposed to get hit with snow. So, depending on how that front comes through, but anybody south of us is going to get more. Right. So yeah. that's all we know. But um, I'm thinking... Drive north, young man. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> Jamie and, and I have to go to Columbus tomorrow, and he said, oh, my God. I said, don't worry. It's not going to be north, strangely enough. It's going to be south. So here we are. But... Uh, Again, stick your head out the weather window, take a look at it. Um, and the main thing is don't panic, slow down, don't go buy all the bread at Kroger. You'll be just fine. Just leave yourself a little more time to get to work and just be a little cautious when you are out walking because there are going to be, uh, with those cold temperatures, 100%, I can guarantee there's going to be patches. Right. Of ice. I, I tell you what, you know, everybody talks about the driving. But you can't emphasize the walking enough because you can it's hurt terrifying. yourself just as bad with oh. a fall as you can if you have a little fender bender in the car. And again, trust me, as packed as all the emergency rooms are right now, you do not want to fall and break something or whatever because it is, it's it's going to be bad for you. No, it is it's just a its a horrendous situation yeah. at a lot of the emergency rooms. Yeah, they're I, just packed. I, I take it that, this, that it, the same is true for, you know, the regular doctor's offices and the urgent cares as well. Yep. But the emergency rooms, you know, it's it's bad. And if, and if you're in a situation, I'll, I'll just say this much. I mean, everybody's going to make their own decisions. But if, it, if you're not seriously ill, um, or that probably wouldn't be the, the, the time to go. Yeah. Contact your doctor or whatever for advice or yeah. whatever. Because or it, remember those there, virtual there is, there is, visits. There is waits now at emergency rooms. And, you know, you're going, you're thinking, hey, man, I'm really sick. You're in line. Our local emergency right room last night, I know for a fact, was on an eight-hour, at least eight-hour wait. So I, I've heard about that myself also. Um, call your doctor. If you do have something going on, um, call your doctor. Again, try those virtual visits. Those are fantastic. Then you don't have to leave the house. Now that is that is another way to, to you know to talk to a professional and get some guidance. For sure. Right. So and they may say, well, you need to come in, and that's okay too. But try it that way first. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Pete. That you are just um, just full of news today. Right. And I'll tell you what. Yep. Here, here it There's is. There's the right telegram. Here. Here's the paper. It we made it out to the newsstands. Hooray to the circulation people Yay. who got it out to where it needs to go. Um, we got got a lot of news in this paper, and so uh, some of the things we talked about um, are in here. And so uh, we uh, definitely. <laughs> You're we, in trouble now. I know. I, I <laughs> pounded the table. I've been told not to. I had a sign up even, but I did it. But anyway, the telegram, it's available on newsstands right. if you don't subscribe. And if you don't subscribe, do it. I hope it will be worth your. Uh, it, it is. Trust us. Headland $54.40 a year. Trust us. All right. All right. Thank you to everyone for tuning in this morning. Thank you, Pete. And thank you, James, for pushing all the right buttons and getting us going this morning. And uh, again, overnight, uh, just be safe out there. Um, leave yourself a little time to get to work in the morning. And um, if you are out walking, be very, very careful. It is going to be slick, 100%. So, All right. We will be back tomorrow. So have a great day, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.